Welcome to Liberty News TV. I'm Norval Rose with your daily dose of news about that national sinkhole known as Obamacare. With more and more studies coming out showing that costs will go up and up for health care providers, insurance companies, and policyholders. Some news organizations are suggesting that this will be a big political headache for the Obama administration. And even Obama's own HHS Secretary Sebelius now concedes that for some folks, premiums will rise, but she's quick to add that those folks will enjoy subsidies, meaning, of course, financial support from other taxpayers. So will this rash of bad news actually be a pain for the president? Or is this kind of crisis, this kind of chaos, exactly what the administration wants and needs to persuade America to swallow the pill of even greater government involvement in cost control and industry regulation, ultimately leading to a wholesale takeover of health care? Single payer. In other words, is this climate of uncertainty the right prescription for Dr. Obama to swoop in and save the day for Americans who are sick about health care costs? Just asking. As noted in a previous report, it's a big week at the U.S. Supreme Court, hearing arguments in two important cases that could, could lead to a redefinition of marriage. And talk about redefinition. It seems that's what some news analysts are trying to do regarding the role of the high court. Is it not the job of the Supremes to make critical judgments based upon the law, firmly grounded in the Constitution? Well, some now suggest it's the role of the high court to weigh societal consensus, to assess trends in the culture, and then to make their rulings accordingly. If that logic pertains, we're no longer a nation of laws. We're just a land of leanings, a Facebook feed informed by likes. We'll pay close attention to see if the high court retains its essential integrity or goes with the flow of shifting societal feelings. By the way, outside the high court yesterday, there was a bit of a scuffle between supporters of same-sex marriage and defenders of tradition. One punch reportedly thrown by a gay marriage advocate and so-called professional activist, formerly a member of Occupy DC. Which led us to wonder, whatever happened to the Occupy movement? Well, you'll be relieved to know it's still alive and still chanting, the only solution is world revolution. Ah, the 99%, those oppressed and downtrodden, but, but wait, not so fast. According to a new study of the Occupy crowd, well-educated professionals far outnumbered the jobless. Sociologists at City University of New York have concluded that more than a third of those who participated in Occupy Wall Street lived in households with incomes of $100,000 or more, and more than two-thirds had professional jobs. And occupying an ever more questionable place in the world of respectable news reporting, CNN is apparently developing a new show pairing Anderson Cooper with Kathy Griffin. Now remember the last time there was an outing featuring these two, that New Year's Eve special? It was full of truly cringeworthy crudeness of a sexual nature. We wonder if this new show does make the CNN lineup, if it'll be restricted to mature audiences with a decidedly immature sense of decency. Always decent and determined to protect freedom, we are Liberty News. Inviting you to join us online at libertynews.com and on Twitter, where we are at Liberty, protecting it. I'm Norval Rose. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Liberty News TV.